Glory to God. We greet everyone to the peace of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Before we begin the word of the Lord, tonight we are going to do a presentation. We're going to introduce a child. We're going to present a child. It's not a baptism. Because baptism is done when the person is already aware of things. And the Bible says that let the children come to me and then prevent them from coming to me because from them is the kingdom of God. So the child does not need to be baptized because they have no blame. They have already been sanctified by the Lord. When they make a decision, uh, when they are 12, 15 years old, then they can make a decision to be baptized. So then they will be baptized. But tonight, the child is going to be presented to the Lord because it's a biblical principle. The Word of God says that when Hannah, she conceived Samuel, which was the fruit of a miracle, when that child uh, stopped nursing, nursing, then she brought the child Samuel to the temple of the Lord and handed that child to the Lord so that the child could serve him every day of his life. And the consecration is exactly this, is, is giving yourself what the Lord gave to Hannah. Now she returns to the Lord. And tonight we're going to do this. We're going to present a child. I'm going to call here the father, Diego Oliveira, and the mother of the child, Nayara, Mariante de Oliveira, and the child, Diana de Oliveira. We're going to pray. You can stay here, please. The Bible says the following. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew 19, 13. So then they brought a few children so that he could lay, pray with lay of hands upon them. And uh, in the consecration of Jesus, Jesus was also consecrated in Luke Luke, first chapter, verse 21. And that they, 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 they brought him to synchronize him, and they gave the name of Jesus, because the, this name was given to him by Jesus, by, by the angel. And when they came, the day of the purification, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. So we see that the parents what are doing here with an ordinance from the Lord, and we do this. We see this in Exodus, when the Lord the, makes this ordination. It says the following, Exodus 13. So then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Sanctify me every firstborn, because, because uh, every child of every woman of, a, of the children of Israel. So this child is receiving today this blessing of being consecrated, of being presented to the Lord, because the parents understood that this is the best way. Amen. So let's pray for this child. Diana. Amen. The church will stand up. How many men? Months? Four months. Hallelujah. Eternal Father, we want this moment pray to you and praise you. And glorify you, Lord, for your holy name, for the life of the parents, because to this day you have helped them, and supported them, you have used them. No problem. You have a, a pacifier? Let the father pick up. Oh, look at this. That's the secret. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let's pray. Then the father. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings and benefits that you have given. 
to this house for the arrival of this child, Lord, because you know that it was the fruit of a, a request, of a miracle. And we ask, Lord, that you may at this moment lay your, hand, your hands upon her life to bless her, to protect her, and to keep her from any evil. Give a blessing. Answer to all her needs. As that you may open all their doors, all the doors for them. Give, give their, your assistance. We pray to you in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The, ch the church may be seated. Very well. Amen. Let's go to Exodus. Open the word of the Lord. Exodus chapter chapter 10 verse 22. Exodus 10 22. 22 and 23. And also, and 12, chapter 42, Exodus 10, 22, and 23. It says the following. So Moses stretched out his hand towards heaven, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another nor did any anyone rise from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their inhabitants, uh, dwellings. Chapter 12, chapter 12, verse 42. 1242 says the following. It is a night of solemn, solemn uh, observation to the Lord for bringing them out of the Egypt, of the land of Egypt. This is the night of the Lord, a solemn observation of all the children of Israel throughout their generations. Lord, we thank you for this moment of fellowship, for everything they have done in our midst. We ask that you, through your word, you may bless your people, your church. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. The children, they sing a song today. The, the, the phrase of the song said, the ones who are going to come up do, are the ones who are in the light. And when we, when we go to the New Testament, Testament, Lord Jesus says, speaks about the parable of the ten virgins. And the Bible speaks that the, the ten virgins, they took their, their lamps and went toward the, the groom. So the only baggage that they had, that they needed to have at that moment, in the moment in which, uh, no, the moment of the feast of the, the wedding, it was oil oil and light. That's why it says that they took their lamps and went to meet. The only thing that they used to go to meet the groom to participate on the wedding was exactly the oil and the light. And when we, when you look into the no Old Testament, it is also a moment of passing. It is a moment of transition. 
the word says that the people of God, they were in Egypt. And there in Egypt, they were slaves. Slaves of the Pharaoh. In Egypt, they suffered, they perished. In Egypt, they were mistreated. In Egypt, they were... I forgot the... I forgot the word. Not not slave. They were uh, similar to being humiliated. Humiliated, despised. Is that is the right word? They were discriminated. They were discriminated because they were they were Jewish. But these people that was in Egypt. <coughs> the Bible says that they did not belong to the Egypt. And the Lord had made a promise to that people through Abraham. And that the place where Abraham placed his feet was going to be the place where this people was going to go towards place where this people was going to live and that was going to be their their nation and it was a people that had no nation because the nation did not even exist yet but existed but before existing their homeland there was the promise and the promise is the promise of of God and the Bible speaks about this about a promise. God made a promise to Abraham. And in our days we can see that this promise is it was fulfilled. Today there is there the nation of Israel, the descendants of Abraham. That the Lord said that we're going to be the, the like the sand on the beach and like the stars in heaven. Your, his descendants were going to be as numerous as this. And Abram was just a man, a family, a single family, one tribe. And now they are a great nation. So then if we look to Abraham, you will see the fulfillment of, of the prophecies of God regarding Israel. But who heard in those days this prophecy, they might even doubt how can a small family, <coughs> a man with a sterile woman, could become a, a great nation. But the word of the Lord was fulfilled in the life of these people. And the Lord said that through these people who was going to send a descendant of Abraham from the root of Jesse, a king according to David. This was going to be our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he was going to come to make another promise. And what was his new promise, the promise he made to us? That life, he promised eternal life. And now he comes to proclaim also the same thing. To say, in the same way as one day God spoke to Abraham, he came to speak with the people of another place, of another land, of another nation, of another kingdom. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. When John, the disciple of Jesus, he was there with 80 about 80 years of age, the Lord gave him a great experience and it is registered in the book of Revelations. And he said the following, I, John, I saw a new heaven, a new land. Because the first heaven, the first land did not exist and the sea did not exist. And I saw the holy land, the new Jerusalem. And God came from heaven with his bride to her groom. So, my brethren, the Bible says that heaven may I pass, land, the land, the earth may pass, but God's words will never pass. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
And when we say here in the past, before the departure of the people of God to the promised land, the land where it flows honey and milk, the Lord gave sent ten plagues. We're going to speak of only two. The plague of the darkness and the plague of the death of the firstborn. And so for the brethren, the, the, the people of God, Israel, in order for them to get away from those plagues, it was necessary for them to have two things that were, which were fundamental. The first one was light and the inhabitants. You know, what is the meaning of the light in the inhabitants? In other words, it was a house that was, it was not in darkness. The world, Egypt, was in darkness. But the darkness was so thick that people could not see each other. One person could not see on another. And this is prophet moment, prophet moment in which we are living. The moment of the thick darknesses. There is a song that says, Darkness come upon the world. And that was a prophecy. What is happening in our days, they are prophecies. The signs of the end are being fulfilled in our days. And there's no way for us to run away from it. It is prophetic. It will be fulfilled. It will happen. The word says, my brethren, that Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven. And there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt. Three days. It speaks of a period. Three days prophetically. Pointing out for the moment where the people was going to be in darkness for three days. Three periods. And three is related to the Trinity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So in other words, the people of Israel was going to uh, actually, the people of Egypt was going to be without the presence of God, without light, without revelation for a period. But the people of God, the Bible says that in their inhabitants, there was going to be light. That we should always have light in our inhabitants. We should never lack light in our house. There should never lack light in our lives because without light there is no identification when you go to the parable of the virgins they did not enter and why did they did not enter into the wedding because they did not have an identification there was no way to identify them because they didn't have light they had a lamp but there was no oil and without oil there is no light in the lamp and the answer was I do not know you so Without light, there is no identification. And if the identi without identification, men cannot enter into the wedding that the Lord has prepared for His people, for His church. Like in the past, Egypt did not take part on the project of God. In the same way, nowadays, the world was not going to take part on the project that God has for His church. Jesus Himself said, The Lord is not going to see me, but I live and you will see me. If we walk in the light in the same way that He is in the light, we have fellowship with the Lord and the blood of Jesus purifies us of every sin. So that at that moment of the departure was necessary light in the, in the inhabitants. And this moment in which we are about to depart this world to this new land, there is need for light and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, in our homes, in our hearts. And what was the other thing that was necessary for that moment? It was the understanding of the of the shedding of blood because without shedding of blood there was not going to be remission of sin so that it was also they killed a lamb and over the doorposts and the windows that was necessary that's the mark of the blood the sign of the blood and the Holy Spirit that gave us complete fellowship with the Lord 
is the understand of the sacrifice of Jesus. Today, people speak about Jesus, but they don't have the understanding of what he did, what he performed in our behalf to our life, the high price that he paid. The blood of an innocent for the life of the guilty, because we are guilty. The word says that a wage should be death, but upon us came the free gift of God, which is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And the word says, my brethren, just to bring this message to a close, that text, 42 says the following. It is a night of solemn observation to the Lord for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord, a solemn observ observance of all the children of Israel through all their generations. The Lord took his people during the night and in this moment of darkness. You know what is happening? God is, is taking his people. <coughs> God is gathering the ones who are chosen. God is gathering his nation, this holy nation, his holy people, to take them out of Egypt, to take us out of this world and guide us to the promised land. And it says the following, this is the night of the Lord, a solemn observation of all the children of Israel throughout the, their generation. This is a night of the Lord. This moment in which you entered here in the house of the Lord. And why tonight? Because if you heard, if you today you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Because to, tonight, you know why? Because there may not be another night. This is the moment. This is the night. There is no second and or third and fourth rapture. This is only one. Or you either go or you, or you don't. So that's why the Lord has chosen this night. There was no night similar to that, uh, that one for the Jewish people. The Lord only took the people out of Egypt once and guided them towards the promised land. And the church will be raptured just one single time. And it is tonight. It is prophetic night, prophetic night in which we are living. Before the midnight, here comes the groom. Let's go to meet him. It's a, mo a moment of the departure. And tonight is a night in which we need to keep. So we need to, in other words, we need to be in, with high guard and vigilance. The Bible says, have your girdle uh, on and your sandals on. Because be vigilant, because you don't know when the Son of Man will come. That's the, the recommendation. You need to keep all the children of Israel of Israel and their generations. Why generation? Because the Lord does not want to save a single one, but He wants to save you and your whole family. And the Bible says, if you if you believe in Jesus, you and your whole household will be saved. And the Lord has shown tonight, and a spiritual gift is shown a house, and He showed the condition in which the electrical installation of the house was. And the, peop the person could see that the light was flickering. And he was able to observe that the problem was on the wiring. The wire was even, uh, the, the shielding was worn out. You know what that means? At any moment, there can be a short circuit, short, so short circuit. And if there is a short circuit, you know what can happen? Darkness, isn't it true? It's in the true darkness. The wire is your connection with God. The moment to do this repair, this adjustment, this, this covenant, this agreement with the Lord. Because the moment in which you are living is the moment of the night. is the moment of the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So this is a moment for us to make this agreement, this pact, this alliance. This is a moment <coughs> to have the installation, the light. So the fellowship there, uh, up to date with the Lord. I don't know at what time I'm going to depart. So I need to be ready to depart at any moment. So the Lord is showing here uh, somebody 
that needs to make an agreement with the Lord. The Lord wants to make a, a, a repair the relationship with this person or this family. The light flickers. Sometimes you are in the darkness, sometimes you're in the light. And you just, you know, let me tell you, it doesn't work because you don't know when the Lord is going to come. So the Lord is giving you a warning so that this fellowship may be restored and that you may be continually on the light, or not in, uh, flick, flickering. And the Lord also sh has shown in another spiritual gift, He was showing a clock that, show, that was showing three minutes to midnight. Three days in the past and three minutes now. It's, it's speaking about the prophetic moment that is going to come to an end. The moment of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit that is coming to an end. The church will be raptured and there is not going to be a second chance. Deborah was able to see that was a wedding feast and the guests were all prepared. But there was a family that was late. <coughs> and the delay was because of the children, actually the, the son. And the angel would go to their house and would bring the whole family. And what is the son here? And the son was what was generated. The ones was born can be a son physically, but it can also be something that you generated in your life, and has brought or a hindrance for your spiritual life. They may even have prevented you from serving the Lord. The son can be many things: your work, your commitments with the things of this world, of what you earned in this world and this country, that may be preventing me from being in the presence of the Lord but the Lord was showing tonight that he is resolving this problem here the angel he brought you here in this place to tell you my brother and sister that tonight the Lord will protect you because he took us out of Egypt the Lord did not leave you there he brought you into his presence and the Lord was also showing a third spiritual gift. He was showing a man that has, come, has been coming to the services. And tonight he came here with his soul in great affliction. And the Lord was analyzing his life and he was looking at his mind. And his mind, in his mind, there, was, there were many things that, that were old that have interfered in his fellowship with the Lord. The Lord was showing books, was showing concerns, personal topics that have not been properly addressed in the past. But and he was also able to see that in the mind of this man that there was a, that there was a, a Bible. And what is the meaning of this? Why did he keep his, the Bible in his mind? Because in the past, this person has had an experience with the Lord. In the past, this man, this man accepted the Word of God in his life and in his heart. But he was left in the past. He forgot. But the Bible says, my brethren, you know what? The mother may even forget, forgot, forget her, her son, but the Lord will never forget about you. The Lord remembered about you, my brother and sister, he brought you to his house because he has a great blessing for your life, for your family. And that man uh, left here with peace because tonight he met with the Lord and with the Word of God. It is a promise that the Lord once made to his life. The Lord, in the fourth spiritual gift, the Lord also has shown another man. He was walking through a narrow path that was very well paved. But during his walk, he began to I'm just missing the word here. He began to dwell between two thoughts. There was the, a well-paved road and there was a, a dirt road on the side with mud and what interferes in the walk so would step there and here, there and here. And what is the meaning of this? 
So one time he's the, the brother is walking in the presence of the Lord and another time he's walking according to his, his own understanding. He's participating in things that do not please the Lord. They are not part of the Lord, the plan of God for his life. So then you get dirty and you contaminate yourself. But tonight the Lord is also praying in your life and to your, be, your behalf and your benefit removing all the things that are preventing you from walk with security and steadfast in the presence of the Lord so that you may continue on this walk that the Lord has, has proposed for your life. Amen. I invite the church to stand up. Let's sing another song. Lord, we praise you and thank you, Lord. We're thankful for this moment of fellowship, for all the blessings and benefits, for the preparation of a people, for the light in our inhabitants, for the blood of Jesus has been every day preserved in your presence, in your project. Blessed be, Father, your name for all the blessings that you have given us. And we plead, Lord, so that you may continue to act and operate 
to give us understanding that in this moment is there is still time to seek you, Lord. There is still moment to make a, a pact, a, a covenant, an alliance. There is time to plead for the Lord, for his blood, so that our sins may be forgiven and that our names may be written in the book of life. Lord, we thank you and adore you for this moment. And we plead to you, Lord, give us a week of peace in your presence, a week of experiences, a week of deliverances, a week of victories. Lord, take your, your people home. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit may be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. I've come to yet to the end of yet another service, and you who are with us, you are welcome in this place. We have service every Wednesday at 8 o'clock of the night. We have service Wednesday through Zoom to the women. On Thursday, we have a service in presence here also at 8 p.m. Everyone can participate in a prayer service. On Saturday, we have a service at 7.30, another service of glorification of the Lord. And Sunday morning at 10.30, we have Sunday school in presence. And also Sunday night at 7.30, another service of glorification to the Lord. If you desire clarification of the word of what was said and the gifts that were shared, you just remain where you are and raise your hand and you are going to give you the proper assistance. Thank you. 